Hey Floss Two, welcome back. My name is Tamara, and I'm coming to you with another Floss Two video. I am on my fourth video now, and so I think we're at a at a good uh, habit here. I know I was looking forward to making this pretty much for the last five days or so, but we had some snow here, so we had some snow days at my son's school. So the video is delayed just a little bit, but that's okay. It's just more stitchy goodness to show you. So I have quite a few things to show you actually. I have a couple of finishes for now, which is, you know, projects that are like on a timed release or that I had sort of set a goal for that I met. I have quite a few whips and then I have some plans and then I have some purchases. So get something, you know, uh, warm to drink if it's cool by you as it is here. And if it's warm, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then get something cool. And uh, I hope you like what I've had to stitch these last two weeks. The first thing I have as a finish for now is I did complete the fifth square of the Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. So I have this in an Evertotes bag. You can find their tag actually here. It's cute. It's just a, a lovely little Christmas village scene. And oh, I actually have the cover chart here, so I don't have to edit it in. So I started in the middle, so the middle is here, right? And I and I went up, and so I stitched this alphabet tree. And that's. Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I'm sure you've seen this before. The All of the Hawk Run Hollow uh, patterns are beautiful. There are a lot of stitching. Back there for a second. I'm actually stitching mine with the um, a hand dyed fibers by Vicki Clayton conversion. So you can see the conversion here. And I am in a different area. I thought I'd try this out. This is typically where I work from home. Um, so I thought I'd give it a shot and see how it works. It's also where I keep a lot of my stitching things. So, um, so that's the floss. And then I'm stitching this on a 40 count. Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit. I did not iron anything. I'm sorry. I did not have time to iron. But there is my fifth square. I'll bring it closer. You can see my hoop mark in it still. Well, it's a little crooked, huh? I'm always amazed at these um, when I watch videos and it goes so smoothly for everyone. Like, is there a lot of editing involved or am I just <laughs> uh, having a good time? So as you can see, I finished the fifth block and I had a little bit of the extra, um, you know, border floss. So I just went ahead and started putting in the border. I don't have plans to pick this up anytime soon, but... When I do, I'll, you know, I'll, I might move down and do this happy couple or this couple of carolers here. So this block here, um, but I'm not sure. Really, I mean, I have so many blocks that I can move to, but this would make sense as it would sort of be the bottom of the middle, right? I had a lot of fun stitching it. The floss is really a joy to work with. It's so smooth. It, this has a couple of um, uh, what, we, what do we say? Um, modifications. <laughs> um, my stitching was off over here. So I actually ended up my, my border is good. The border is the right count. But I had started at the bottom border and worked up. And so somewhere in my counting, I had an, a, a one stitch error. So 
I did have to do some negative stitching of the words as I realized things weren't kind of lining up the correct way. These crowns are supposed to be not right up against the border, but I don't think it matters too much. Um, and ultimately, I think it's just really beautiful. The other finish for now section is, sorry for the zipping. Uh, this is in another Evertotes bag. I did finish a page of Jane Atkinson, which is by The Scarlet Letter. I know this is a popular one. So I've had some comments um, saying they're here just for this pattern, so <laughs> hold it up for a minute. So it's Jane Atkinson. It's an Adam and Eve sampler. It has a stunning floral border. It's gorgeous. I've explained kind of how I'm going to modify it, and I realized, I think last time I said John Dunn um, is the quote I'm going to put in, but it's actually John Milton. <laughs> I worked on John Dunn too, but he's a poet, um, a strict poet, and Milton, while Paradise Lost is poetry, wrote other things as well. So, yeah, okay. I got my page finished, so in this for this pattern, I started in... The upper left, I am using the called for Aver Soie, which is a little bit of a jumble, but the called for Aver Soie, which I had never used before, uh, which but are really nice. I'm stitching this on a 40 count platinum Newcastle. Not Newcastle. What's the word? Zweigart. Zweigart. It's a very large piece of fabric because it's a very large pattern, as you'll see from my one page finish. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Look at those colors. I can't. So pretty. Um, there are a couple of errors in the chart which are not major. Um, like in this chart here for this sort of um, daisy looking flower, there's like a random X instead of one of the orange color ones and the X is what we're using for sort of this dark green. So um, I just ignored it and, and carried on as the pattern uh, looked like it should be done. And as a note, the pattern for this flower looks different than what's on the model. So about halfway through, I was like, whoa, did I stitch completely the wrong thing? Because that little chrysanthemum or little daisy flower is supposed to be that flower. And it's not really focusing all that well, but it looks very different. But I stitched it as the pattern said to stitch it. So unclear to me why it's different. I couldn't find any errata or anything online. And honestly, I think it's beautiful anyway. But just a note, see, as you can see, it does look very different. Uh, the page break is technically kind of like here and here, right? No, here at this, at the bottom of this sort of leaf. And I just carried my floss down as much floss as I had as I didn't want to cut the floss. The only thing I really cut was the floss for sort of this red in this flower. Look at those colors. I, I cannot, I cannot, it looks so good on camera. It looks really good in person, but it's just so bold and so vibrant. And can you imagine, hang on, let me, let me back it up here. <laughs> <laughs> how big this thing is going to be. It is a beast of a pattern. And it goes and goes and goes. The stitch count, if you're curious, if uh, if you don't have it in front of you, is, let me find it for you. It's 290 horizontal, which is big, and 460 vertical. 460. <laughs> And the one page count that I've given you, let me just, I'll give you the stitch count of that first page. It's 
it's like 78 by 97. So this is 97, right? So we're going to do this another five times. Huge. 40 count though. I mean, I th you can make it smaller. 46 count or, or 56 count would obviously shrink it up. But this is going to be a statement piece on my wall. I am so excited about it. And as I said, I, my plans, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Sorry, you're going to hear this one more time, if not every time I talk about this pattern because I'm so excited about it. I am turning this into a J John Milton sampler because I worked on Paradise Lost as part of my dissertation and I want to put a quote in here where the original one is about, you know, um, like the sacrifice of Jesus for, you know, uh, human sin. I instead want to write uh, a piece about the Garden of Eden from Paradise Lost in here. I have a couple of quotes in mind um, and technically page one does have a start for the over one. Um, it's the beginning of Jane's name. It's like the first letter of Jane's name, the J. So I need to start thinking about the quote and uh, getting some charting, some graph paper and charting it out, how I'm going to fix it. I think I'll still keep it over one so everything will fit. Um, but we'll, we'll just take that one piece at a time. The next thing that's a finish for now is I finished the February section of the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries Halloween Wreath. This is in a 805 stitcher bag. It's cute. It's like little, little kitties, coffee stain, you know, as it is. I have a five-year-old coffee is, ne is a necessity in this house. Um, this is a very poor printout of sort of where we are. So it was like October, November, December, January, February. So they kind of cut the bow in two so that it wasn't quite so much stitching. I think there had been some complaints about the Christmas, about the Christmas one. Uh, this is just called for DMC. I bought the kit, so I just used the kit fabric and kit floss. The floss is DMC, and the fabric is a 28 count pewter by Picture This Plus. Let me get the house more in view here for you. And that's what she looks like. Oh, so good. It's so bright and cheery and spooky and I love it. So the February section was the other half of the bow. Let me just fold this a little bit so I can bring it close. Was the other half of the bow. So let's see October. It was this half. So we got another little candy corn the bow, some more candy pieces, and yeah. I think it's gonna look spectacular as a pillow, which is my plan. I don't have much else to say, but let's take a look at it, see how pretty it is. Oh, I love this cat too, I, you know, so stinking cute and honestly once you sit down to stitch it it's not it's you know it's full coverage type stitching right um it's pretty easy to color complete I would say I you know there's a couple of times where like say the orange you know you have to kind of move it around a little bit or a color that's not used as often but really really enjoyable to stitch doesn't take me that long to finish so I can work on other things as you can see. That's it for finishes. We're going to move on to works in progress, so things that I'm still actively working on. 
One of the projects I don't believe I've shown you here is my Thurza Priscilla Dawes, which is from Hemlock and Rye. That's Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World um, uh, here on Floss Tube. Let me just try and find the cover photo for you. It's a it's a working copy, so it's a little a little worse for the wear here. Doo, doo, doo. So the interesting thing about this pattern is it was released in two different colorways. You had sort of a brighter colorway that was based off of the back of the antique sampler, and then a more muted colorway, which is based off of the uh, the front of the sampler where it received you know more light. And I am doing the bright version, which is really oh, it's so it's so colorful and so wonderful. And oh, I can't wait to see it all. Um, and I have this in a dot dot goose bag, which was based off of um, it's using some Teresa Kogut fabric. But as you can see, I am not using the called for DMC. I did my own sulky conversion. I'm stitching this on, just looking for my fabric, on Oaken 32 count Lugana. And so I wanted to give the sulkies a real, a real, um, go and I have it rolled up but let me let me unroll it up here with my magnet clips it'll still be a little hard to see because it's in the hoop but so this is where I'm at so far I'll just take the hoop off so you can see it in all of its glory And it is so pretty. Look at those colors. Boom, right? <laughs> so where I worked at was up in this area. So I brought all of this stuff up to the, the top border. Um, my, and this gets a little bit into plans. My plan is to get a page finish in March. So I worked all in this area. I had this fruit bowl done already. So I was sort of working around it and then I wanted to get up here to the, the top of the border. But look at that, oh, that flower in the middle and the little animals and that peacock. So pretty. And I really do love it on this fabric and the sulky is a, a real joy to work with. It makes stitching um, anything that would call for, for two threads really easy. Not that I really have a problem with it. The, um, the Halloween wreath is using two DMC threads and it's not, it's not a problem at all. Um, but you don't have to worry about railroading your stitches because, you know, it's, everything just lays really, really nicely. And that's Thurza. hoop over here so that it doesn't fall down. The next thing I worked on, after I finished those goals, I didn't quite know what I wanted to work on and I was, um, I had started thinking about March and what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to sort of jump ahead to those goals yet. I wanted, I wanted something else to work on. So I pulled out um, a sampler that I started in was it September or November? Black Sampler September, which was the Modern Folk Embroidery AIO 1844. I bought the kit from Evertote. So it's using Roxy Floss Co. Floss and linen, I think. No, I just bought the floss. 
one second. Now I can't remember which fabric I'm using. Yeah, I just bought the I just bought the floss. The the fabric is a 40 count fox and rabbit Eureka. Sorry for any confusion. And the floss is chalkboard. It's a little hard to tell the variegation in here, but it's it's there. It goes from like a, a black to a uh, sort of a medium gray. And I don't have a lot done. The only thing I had stitched before was um, the animals and a smidge of the border, but I put in a couple lengths of floss to sort of look at the border and start carrying it over. I had this done. I was calling these like parsley leaves. So I had these little parsley leaves done and I started working on these and I want to bring the border over and, um, you know, work on that top bit because that's where all the animals are. <laughs> the thing I'm really excited about is this motif down here. But look at all these. Oh, the border is so good. And this is my first black work sampler. So um, part of it is my lack of patience for working with one color. But it really is a nice sort of like palette cleanser between working on different colorful projects. And, you know, while I'm thinking about other things that I want to work on, it's, it's good to pick it up. And it's really, really nice. Um, and the more I see of it, the more, the more I'm excited to see more. Another whip that I worked on was the 2020 pandemic, pandemic sampler by Sarsi Girl. And I had a goal, uh, to stitch the house. I wanted to, I thought I'd finish it, but you know, it's just, it's, it's a very large house and I did not finish it. So that's my goal. My next goal is to finish the house, but I did put in some good lengths of floss. I started carrying it up and bringing it over and I put in some windows. This is using, uh, the, the called for DMC with the exception of one color. I think I switched out this orange for an orange that I had in stash. This is on, I think it's an R and R. I forget. I've had this project for a long time and it doesn't, it doesn't get a lot of love. And there's nothing wrong with the pattern. I don't have the floss tag. I want to say it's a vintage something or other, but I can't remember what it is. I apologize. It's really nice though. It's got a lot of good modeling. I think it's going to look really nice when it's done. Um, but yeah, so I put some floss into that. And the last thing that I worked on <clears throat> was because, uh, so yesterday was March 1st and I picked one of my oldest whips and I broke it down by month um, and tried to organize it so that I could have a finish by the end of the year. Um, so there, you know, there's 10 months left, including, including March. And so I want I would like to get this finished. I started this in 20, I want to say 2018. So it's, it's one of my oldest whips. There's only one really that I have that's older that I might even just abandon, but this is the winter cat sampler. Um, this is the Janlin kit, though, if you want, it's actually a cooler designs pattern. Uh, and you can still get the pattern. The Janlin doesn't make the kit anymore, at least not that I could find. And there are other cats for other seasons. And part of the reason why I want to finish this is because I want to do the other cats. I don't know if you can tell from my name, but literature and cats is where I'm at. So I broke this up into months. So... 
the middle like like you know middle line here and then there's you know uh, a line kind of equidistant <laughs> from each other and this is the march section which is this little squirrel and the horn and a quarter of the wreath this little bird this little pine cone and I've had work done on this before. Um, you know, it is a it is a whip, so I've had it for quite a bit. Oh, jeez, my needle miner just went flying off of the table. Let me unroll it here. So it's on fourteen count Ada. Not my favorite fabric to work in, but that's that's what was in the kit, and that's what I started it on. So you can see I center started it. I worked on this amaryllis a little bit, then I moved over into the paper whites, and now I'm working on the squirrel. And there's not so much here that I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't move it to something else. And I might, uh, I, I sort of put a few stitches in <sighs> to see how I feel about it. Um, the kit is... It uses DMC numbers and it does seem like DMC. You know, when I stitch it, it, you know, kind of has that feeling. It does not like, um, it's not shredding or anything. So <laughs> that little squirrel is in there. I started the horn. It doesn't really look like much. So you can see when I was stitching these flowers, I don't know, probably two or three years ago, I started doing the outlining because I was like, is this even going to look, is, am I doing this the right way? Is it look, is it going to be the flowers, right? I was really nervous about it. And similarly with the squirrel's body, I was like, okay, well, here's his foot. There's his tail. I don't know what this is, but it's outlined. It looks like it's, oh, it's part of the horn. That's why it's the horn. So I'm sorry, I'm showing you the wrong one, that one. everything's backwards. So I do have some 28 count antique white um, Lugana. So it's, you know, similar. I've put some floss in, but not so much that I couldn't just convert the reds over to a floss, um, you know, a DMC hank that I have on hand. I do have a counting error that I've already noticed here where like the tail and this ribbon are supposed to be right up against this border so i don't know if you have opinions let me know um the ada isn't bad it's it's a little it's a little stiff but honestly <laughs> it's several years old so it's actually it's kind of floppy so it's not so bad to work on um but yeah, I'm conflicted. I don't know what to do. I want to stitch it. I want to stitch all of them. Do I want to stitch all of them on Ada though? I don't know, but I really want to do this plan. <laughs> I really want to do the plan of, of stitching it. So I might just carry, carry on. But yeah, if you have a strong opinion, let me know. And that's it for whips. So then plans. So I started writing things down in my in my book, which is not, I just made my own sort of notebook. So my plans for March are to do the winter section, uh, the, the March section of Winter Cat, right? So what that entails really is bringing it over, you know, stitching the, the bit of the wreath here, finishing the squirrel on the horn, carrying the border over, stitching this bird and the pine cone. So it's really not so much because uh, I'd already had some of this done from before. Similarly for other months, there'll be some lighter stitching uh, because I've already done some of it, right? So for instance, uh, April also is a pretty light stitching month because I've done this, though I have to do all of that. So uh, we'll see. I also uh, plan on doing the March release of the Halloween wreath, so hopefully another good section of that done. I want to get another page done on Jane Atkinson, which is a big push. That's It's a lot of stitching. You know, it's another 
another 90 by 70, um, which is not possible if that's the only thing I work work on or, or you know primarily work on, but it's it's a push, but we'll see if I can do it. I want to finish the Renato Perlin There Is Always, so I'm really close to a finish on that. I showed that last time, um, and I didn't work on it at all since our last video. I kind of wanted to put it away to work on some of this other stuff. And then I actually plan on doing 25-7 on the Pandemic Sampler, right? So I want, if I can put 25 minutes a day in on this project, like 25 minutes, I did this yesterday, right? I did 25 minutes and I was able to like get this section of house done. So every 25 minutes, I can like sort of chunk this house out, <laughs> fill in the borders, right? Like, and maybe it won't be 25 seven until it's finished, but maybe it could be 25 seven until I finish a page, right? Like that's a good idea. And if you don't know about 25 seven, um, I don't know who's, uh, whose brainchild it is, but people talk about it on FlossTube. Essentially, you stitch, you pick a project and you work on it 25 minutes a day or sometimes 25 stitches a day, seven days a week. And you can do that as long as you want. And it's a good way to sort of see progress. And just doing it yesterday, beginning March, you know, being, being my March plans, I could see like, oh, I can do this for 25 minutes. It's not even that long. And then I was like, oh, the 25 minutes is over. Okay, switch projects. And it was nice because I felt like I got something done, but I didn't feel overwhelmed by just work on this until it's done. You have to, you know, finish this house, finish whatever. Like, I think that's going to be my mindset for that project. And it's going to help me not feel overwhelmed by kind of how much there is to do. And similarly, breaking up my other projects into finish this block, finish this page, finish this motif, finish, you know this section, like that really helps me because uh, I have a lot of whips, which I haven't done a whip parade uh, for you all yet, which I should do soon, maybe. Maybe I'll do a mid-year project review. And um, yeah, so those are my plans. There could be some new starts in there. Um, I can kind of roll over into purchases now. So some of the things that I purchased. Some I have to show you and some I don't. So let me flip to my purchases. I ordered a couple of things. So I did the pre-order for the Evertote Holiday Countdown box. So I want to do that again. I really enjoyed doing the Flossmas videos. And it was a really, it was really a pleasure to work on that project every day. Not a lot of other stitching got done, but I have a finish and it was beautiful and I love it. So I ordered and I'll put the, the box here and I'll put a link in the box um, in the drop down below in case you're interested. I think there are still some boxes left. So I ordered that. I also put in my pre-order for Expo, which is Needlework Expo. Um, I'm certain most of you are familiar with what this is, but basically it's a convention where designers go and they sort of bring their charts with them and shops come and buy charts or, you know, they can buy charts then or they can buy charts to like for later. Don't know 100% how that works, but essentially you can pre-order the things that are released that you know are coming out. So I place an order through Garon Stitchery. I'll place uh, the link down below. And there was a really helpful video actually from uh, C. Zook Stitch. She did a whole walkthrough of what Garon Stitchery had, which I found really helpful. I'll put the link to her video below as well. It's long, uh, <laughs> but it was good. I got a lot of stitching done. I uh, broke it up, you know, watched it a little bit here, a little bit there. And so I ordered one, two, three, four, five, six charts. And I'll just show those when they arrive, but I did order them. And then what else did I get? I, oh yes, I got um, my The Stitch Me Fabric Club of the Month. And let me open, it's gonna be crinkly. I kept it in the plastic. Hold please. Okay, so I took them everything out of the plastic. So I ordered, I'm a part of the Bestitch Me 
fabric club and I get two cuts of fabric. I get one that's the fabric of the month, which tends to be a brighter color. And I usually get um, the 32 count Lugana and it's an 18 by 27 piece. And it is so bright. I, oh my gosh, it's even brighter when I open it up. I have no idea what I'm gonna use it for. Whoa, it is so bright. <laughs> and the other side I think is even brighter. <laughs> so this color is called Sorbet. I mean, look at that modeling though. It's really, it's really pretty. Um, it is very outside of my comfort zone, but it's nice. You know, it's bright, but it's on the same hand, I think you could do something with it that's not, you know, um, that would make the fabric shine. Like, I don't want to just cover it up. So that's one. And uh, let me I'll hold the tag up in case you're interested. So it's the Stitch Me. And then I'm also part of the Neutrals Club, and this, it's the same count, so it's 32 count, 32 count Lugana, and the colorway for the Neutrals Club is Flan. That is some serious modeling. Look at that, though. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't know what I'm going to put on this yet, either. No real plans. Look at that. Oh, so good. So good. So I received that. I also got my fabric club from three, or not fabric, my floss club from 3L, 3L Threads. It's a Facebook group. I can put that information in the drop down below and you sign up and you can get different thread packs. I subscribe to two. I get the Dinky Dyes, which is five colors of Dinky Dyes. So these were our colors this month. So you get a couple variegated, kind of a subtle tonal, and then um, some solids. So I get, this is kind of tonal too, but this one is definitely more solid. No plans for those yet either. I just, um, I'm really enjoying stitching with silk, and so I want to try um, some other silk brands. So this, I thought this would be a good way to do it. And this is the Dinky Dyes, and it's eight meters. And then I also um, am part of the club for Gentle Art. You get 10 colors, and you can see it's a real variety. <laughs> Sorry for the edit there. I needed a cough drop <laughs> as um, I was having a bit of a, a coughing fit. Anyway, so with the Gentle Arts, I got Walnut, Wood Smoke, Weathered Barn, Wood Rose, Sea Spray, Daisy, Vintage Lace, Raspberry Parfait, <laughs> sorry if you hear a little croak in my throat, um, Shaker White, and Holly Berry. All very pretty. I, I love the Gentle Arts threads, and again, I just wanted to build up my collection, so these clubs are a really good way to do that. The last thing I got was I wanted to try out Brennan Needle, which is um, a company in Canada. And so I ordered their, so I ordered their February uh, Three Floss Club and Fabric. So the floss is really interesting because it's speckled, which I've never seen before in a floss for cross-stitching. I've only ever seen speckles in yarn. 
so I thought this was a really, really interesting um, thing to do. So here's the three of them together. And you can see the speckles. This is Mar Fulton. I, I might be saying that wrong. This is Faint, Fate Don't Tip Her Hand Lightly. And this is Me Decay. I don't know what that means, but it's cool. So I'm going to give them a try. I think these ones that are sort of speckled would be really interesting um, in like an ink circles design or I don't know, something where there aren't a lot of color changes, you know. So I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. And then the fabric is um, a 28 count and it's called Old Fashioned Rose. This is the, um, the company tag. It's the color. And this is really pretty. So again, very bright, very vibrant. It almost looks like a galaxy though. I think like a monochromatic design on this would be really pretty. And that is it. Bit of a longer video today. I have a lot to show you. Um, hopefully we can keep with the two week or approximately two week <laughs> intervals between videos. I think that that's a good amount. I have a lot of things to show you. It's a bit of a longer video. Um, but there's not quite so much effort involved in sort of like editing every day or every week. So if you're still here, thanks so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I know that there's a lot of opportunities to watch other people's videos. Really, I'm just interested in the community that FlossTube provides and sort of giving back because I watch a lot of FlossTube. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put my video out there in case... Uh, somebody else needs something else to watch and just, you know, uh, in case we can connect over one of the things that I'm working on. It's been a real joy to talk with you today and I hope that you have a great day, good stitching, don't let the frog come, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.